Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, episode 3, July 22nd. We got the NL and AL reports. We're going to catch you up on all the action from the weekend. We got a bunch of trade targets, a bunch of teams looking to get those trade targets. Talk about what we think about all that. Elevator talk, slump watch, and fuego, and the rest. We're excited. Let's go. Talking Baseball. All right. Whoa, whoa. Soundboard still not oh. here, so for the live viewers on Patreon, I uh, apologize about that. But we are very excited to be doing this show again every Monday, every Friday. You guys did it. I thought I asked for about 50 reviews. I said first 50 get stickers. I think we're sitting over 200 right now, Jake. It was impressive as hell. You guys are the best. Got us into the top five on the iTunes sports list. We couldn't be any more thankful, grateful, and proud of uh, the community and everyone. So uh, hopefully we get another great, fantastic show. Jake is coming to you uh, from a bender. He's playing He's playing a, like uh, a I wish gut, it was a bender. Gut game. I wish it was a bender. I'm just on uh, that travel mode, man. Re- reverse travel life. Uh, going East Coast to West Coast gets a little gnarly, especially you work in a couple delays, but... Uh, Poppy Gordo got in at about 4 a.m. last night, feeling good. Got the dog from Doggy Daycare. I hadn't seen him in like 13 days. Uh, so we, we set our pleasantries. He's asleep. He's very asleep. He was at dog camp having a good time, so he's actually probably pissed to be here. Um, Jim, the top five thing is bizarre because baseball is not popular anymore. That's what I've been told. Um, so, I mean, having... Having a Yankees podcast at number two, and then just a talking baseball podcast at five, I just it just doesn't add up to me. But no, it's um it's awesome, and uh, thank thanks everyone. We uh we we had a pretty cool couple of days. Yeah, there's <laughs> a couple 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 moments in the past few years where you definitely have tough days, and you're like, what what is this? And uh, something like that makes it all worthwhile, especially I, I saw some family and friends and they were all over the moon for me. And I know that's some of the best part of it for both of us. And uh, if when all of you guys follow us and tweet at us and do all that, you kind of become our friends. We have this <laughs> network of Yankee like pseudo online friends that we've met and some of them have become real life friends and we're excited to do that around the league. Yep. So we thank you. Uh, I was going to say something, but now I forget. We got a lot of baseball to discuss. Oh, I was going to say, I think the goal is to go live, uh, live for Patreons uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern time every Monday and Friday. We're a bit late today, but like we said, Jake's travel schedule is insane. So just happy to have him gutting this out with us. I meant a travel yeah. bender, not a drinking bender. I know. That's what I'm saying. I wish it was a real bender. Yeah. Uh, although I saw you having some beers at the airport. I had a Coors Got, Light. Have to. I, I, had a, I had a beer or two with dinner. Um, Almost yeah, law if your Bradley, flight gets delayed. Yeah. I mean, Bradley, Bradley International, they got a new lounge, and there was a Groupon deal, and so I, was, I, mean, I mean, drinks and stuff. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you got to. You got, got to. to. Um, so, uh, How are you we, doing, Jim? I'm good. I'm excited. Today's, uh, like, back to normal uh, in the office. Intern Luke's here. I got up at 7 a.m. because I... I know that once we start this, we have four shows to to record and edit and all that. And uh, I wanted to get some breakdowns out beforehand. I was on DAZN last night talking baseball with Sessa's family barbecue. That was exciting. So things are going good. It's been wild. I know a lot of the YouTube crowd was like, why'd you stop doing breakdowns? Uh, they're coming. Uh, I do apologize. Slowed down a bit. It was a, it was a wild weekend. Yeah. Uh, like seven interviews which is good for everything we're doing here. So I can, couldn't turn them down. Uh, if you want to watch live and talk in the chat live, we are hosting that on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash John Boy Media. Uh, and I think I'm going to start shouting out new patrons, Jake. And yeah. um, at the end of this episode, all the patrons we already have, which is going to be a mouthful. We'll do it at the end. Yeah. In the future, I want to shout out all the new patrons at the beginning. They will be sponsoring the episodes for now. That's what I want to do. What's that Patreon link, Jim? Patreon.com slash John Boy Media. Boom. Boom. All right. Here we go. Let's get right into it, Jake. The NL and the AL report. You can go first with the NL report. Jake, what happened? 
Can you tell us? Jimmy, Jimmy, welcome to Atlanta where the players play. They, the Bravos, take two out of three from the Nats, including a walk-off in the first game by bringer of rain Josh Donaldson. And Kevin Gossman returns from the I.L., throws a nice start on the final game of the series. The Fightin' Phils win the Sunday game versus Pittsburgh, 2-1 to one in 11 innings to take the rubber match of the three-game set on the road. The Mets, oh my, put on an exhibition on how to lose Jim Quantity three extra innings losses to Los Hibido Gigantes. They won the other game. Um, so very Mets. We're going to be talking about them. And the Florida Fishies, a.k.a. the Miami Marlins, they get swept by the Dodgers, and that's obvious. The Cubs, NL Central, they win games one and two, both with six to five scores. How about that? Drop the final game to the Padres in Wrigley. The Brew Crew take three or four in the desert against Arizona. Big Tyler Saladino Grand Slam on Sunday, Jim. Tyler Saladino, huh? Cards take three out of four at Great American Ballpark against the Reds, including a 12-11 game where they scored 10 runs in the sixth. Jim, and then in the West, you heard the Dodgers swept. You heard Zona drop three or four. You heard San Francisco embarrass the Mets, or the Mets just embarrass themselves. The Padres lost a set to the Cubs. The only team missing is my Rockies. They were searching for rock bottom. They found it on Saturday after two losses to the Yankees. They salvaged it with a Sunday win. A lot of fun stuff. A lot of fun stuff. There wasn't any like major headlines from any games. And uh, in the even in the AL, like we have trade talks coming. But last last episode, it was like the Phillies and Dodgers were heated nonstop. Boone gave us a huge headline. Like we didn't have any of that this weekend, but we did have some uh, some interesting stuff. The the Cubs win; they need to start running away. But the Dodgers, the the Brewers take three of four, so that's going to be close. They're only two games back now uh, in the NL Central. And I think the Brewers are going to be going to be on their tail if not they catch up at some point. Yeah, I mean you're. Uh, I, I mean when you're in that two game flight zone, that's nothing in baseball. That's I mean if you play each other, <laughs> that could be gone in a day and a half. So the the NL Central is getting a little exciting. Um, we'll we'll see who else ends up falling into that race a little bit. Um, Jim, I don't know. It, it, you're kind, it's kind of funny, and I think we're going to talk about it when we get to Enfuego. Um, and things like that there wasn't there wasn't a huge a lot of like beastly individual performances on offense no one had like a three homer weekend yeah I was searching yeah it was just kind of, it wasn't it's not like a bad weekend but it was just like here's, here's baseball that no one ran away with like you need to talk about me a team or a player really there's some yeah. pitching performances that were really good we'll get into that uh just a quick update the the Brewers and the Cubs they play each other next weekend, Jake. Yeah. So, so that's uh um if the Cubs if the Cubs uh if the Cubs lose this series, this upcoming series. I don't know who they're playing. The Brewers are playing the Reds. The Cubs are playing the Giants, who are really hot. So say the Giants take two of three from the Cubs, and the Brewers take two of three from the Reds. This next weekend, that Brewers Cub series, that's gonna be a huge, huge series. That's exciting. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, St. Louis is very much there. I, I don't want any of our Cardinal listeners to turn it off. They're, I mean, they're half a game back in Milwaukee. So so the NL Central is kind of fully heated up. The Giants, I mean, that's that's an incredible other story going on. Um, I, the Mets go Met um, in incredible fashion. Um, oh, that well, series is insane. Almost unbelievable from the Seagulls flocking around in the 16th inning um, to the drop ball. Uh, I mean, it's it's you, it's what do you do if you're a Mets fan? What do you do? So I posted the breakdown this morning on that drop ball by Dom Smith in left field and big baby David, who writes for us over at johnboymedia.com. He he writes a little write up on all my breakdowns and gets them on the website. So if you ever want like a full conglomerate of where all the breakdowns were and some extra thoughts, go go check out johnboymedia.com. And I didn't even know this, which is uh, bad on my part, but Dom Smith and Rosario teamed up for the same exact dropped ball last season, 11 months ago, and Kutch scored the winning run for the Giants. They both went back for that ball in between them. 
ran into each other. They didn't run into each other this time, but that's incredible. It's just so Mets. I feel bad for the Mets. Uh, I, w- I, w- I would... I don't know if I could be a Mets fan. Ooh, interesting. That's a, that's a good question. That's me. <laughs> is, that, is that like the final boss level of being a baseball fan? You have to go I through one so year much as a respect. full Mets fan. Yeah, I, 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 you know how like when um, Giancarlo Stan got traded from Miami to Yankee Stadium in his opening press conference, they asked, "Do you have any, do you have any like advice for Marlins fans that have seen all these players get traded away?" And he was like, "Still be a fan, but be a fan from afar for a couple years. Don't really invest too much into it." That's how like that's how I'd yeah. live as a Mets fan. Yeah, it's, uh, I'd, I'd say I live that way as a Knicks fan, but once that first game tips off, I say, well, maybe they'll get the seventh seed. Yeah, same um, thing. Yeah, I don't so have yeah, a, I don't have a team that does that to me like you do with the Knicks and Mets fans do. Yeah, it's, it keeps it keeps you in check, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I I don't know. We had the, I mean the two top teams in the NL East played each other. The Braves. I mean, they keep passing each test. Uh, the Donaldson walk off helps, and Gossman coming off the IL. Um, I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure what else is jumping off to me right now. Philly and St. Louis are half games out of the wild card technically. So that I, the NL race is, I think officially we were wondering we were doing some of the trade deadline stuff, and we were like, is this is this going to sort itself out? How's this going to get? We've kind of got our fun teams in a bunch there for sure. The Padres, the Rockies, the Pirates, the Mets, the Reds, before the break, they all were still somewhat in it. Yeah. I, I don't like I don't want to be mean to fan bases, but in my opinion, they are dropped and the um Diamondbacks, the Phillies, the Cardinals, Brewers, Nats are the wild card hunt teams. And I think we will see it slim down and down as we go. Yeah, you wonder, I mean, Arizona, San Francisco, you feel like both, I mean, they're both 500 right now, 100 games in the season. That's a, now that's baseball, Susan. Uh, you wonder, uh, we keep talking about how big these final weeks are, and I, I heard Buster only talking about it on, on the Ryan Rossillo podcast. It, it is funny that baseball, this is the one time of year small sample size matters, and I think we'll, we'll get into that with Mad Bum start a little bit, but uh, I think for now, maybe should, should we get to the AL, Jim? Yeah, you want to pop over see what see what happened. I you got want me it. To give you the the intro trombone. Yeah, give me the intro trombone. Usually we have the- a soundboard, guys. My laptop's broken. The soundboard's usually a lot of fun. We currently don't have a soundboard. I'm sorry. So now it's just 50 minutes of me playing Attack of the Slide trombones. No, your AL report brought to you by Jimmer John Boy Fredette. Wow, nice. All right. The Twins and the A's split a four-game set. The Twins winning the last game via walk-off. The Twins were in not a real slide, but somewhat of a slide. The walk-off leads them into a series versus the Yankees, which is going to be very nice for them. Baltimore takes two of three from the Red Sox. I repeat, Baltimore took two of three from the Red Sox. Kashner lost a start versus his old club, and the pitcher that's kind of somewhat replacing one of the open spots in um the Orioles lineup had a big game, big time yikes for the Sox. The test that they have coming up is incredible. I'll get to that afterwards. The Yankees played the Rockies, as Jake said, and the Yankees won the first two games. In game two, the Rockies hit the most rock bottom you can. Bud Black got ejected in like didn't even put up a fight. It was a sad ejection. They had sad fielding. Everything was sad. They do come back in the third game and try to start a little better uh stuff we'll see we'll see how it goes i still think they're out of it but at least they they came up for the third game the royals and the indians squared off and cleveland won game three to take the series that would have been a bad loss for this indians team who's currently on the hunt but they win the series so it's good for them the blue jays and the tigers squared off in a series that no one cares about but detroit avoids the sweep with a 10th inning win over the Blue Jays, Marcus, Marcus Stroman pitched in front of eight scouts, they say. He is on display. Um, Vogelback had a big game. Wait, is that the correct? Maybe I put that in the wrong spot. The White Sox and the Rays squared off, and the White Sox won the first two games. The Rays just keep uh, going on a little downslide. They blew the save in game two to lose in 11 innings. The Rays won the last game, though, to not get swept, but the Rays kind of lose some ground. They do lose ground. And they're kind of faltering right now. 
Uh, the Astros swept the Rangers, which the Rangers came out of the break playing terrible. They, uh, they're they looking like they're out of it. The Angels and the Mariners uh, played in the West, tied up one game apiece, but the Angels win game three to win the series, and that is your AL report. The East... The East is big gap. Yankees are eight games up, I think, now. Nine games up by taking three or four from the Rays and then the Rays losing two games to the White Sox. Boston did not help themselves by losing the series, so they're 11 games back. And the Cleveland's jumping up on the on the Twins, Jake. The Twins went two and four in the series. Cleveland took won their series. They're only three games back now. Um, I'd be a little scared if I was the Twins. I'd be a little scared because I don't think Cleveland's a joke. Yeah, I I think the bigger thing is cuz I think the Twins you're you're still in a good place for the playoffs. You are 4 and 6 on uh, your last 10 and you're welcoming the Yankees to town. So big this will be up. this will be a big test and a, a fun matchup. Um the Yankees Twins in Minnesota that uh that should be good some good baseball. Um yeah, Cle- Cleveland's coming. Uh the, the I, I don't say a lot of good stuff as people are starting to figure out on this show, but when I said I was buying stock in Cleveland a couple weeks ago, it's adding up, and I think it's hilarious that they still have Trevor Bauer on the trade block. Like, you just can't do that. I, I understand you could get a little more for him now than if you trade him in the offseason because you can't pay him, but you're, you're, you are in the playoff run, and, like, Kluber's coming back. Like, you can't send that message to your team. What do you think? they have him on the trade block or just reporters are saying he make it because i i don't think they've ever had him on the trading block i think there was a time when they did because they they they've openly said as a franchise like we can't re-sign this guy so yeah, they say point, that about all their stars it's so it's like not a fun thing that their gm constantly says yeah maybe stop saying it to him so much didn't he basically uh, say enjoy lindor because there's no way we're going to be able to resign him Something along those lines, which I, I, I know they're a middle mark. D- I don't know. I won't go on a, on a Cleveland rant there, but they're, uh, they're playing good baseball. There's going to be some fun, some fun AL Central games between them. We talked about that last time. You're right. This Minnesota Yankees series just got a lot more exciting for me. Um, well, they check off- this out. Check this out, Jake. The Twins' next series is against the Yankees, right? Right. Tough. Then four games versus the White Sox. Which, I'll say this, the White Sox uh, have dropped down a little bit, but they just played the Rays tough. And a four-game set, they're tough. Four-game sets are tough. I I feel like majority of the time they get split. On the other hand, the Indians have three games versus Toronto, who may be trading pieces away. They might be more preoccupied with who's getting traded away than winning at the current game. And uh, then they have four games versus the Kansas City Royals, So we're two series away, uh, potentially, from the Indians and Twins having a real close race uh, with uh, strength of schedule kind of being on opposite sides here. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's that's what's going on in the Central. Jim, I think the other team we have to talk about, and you're saying there's, there's not a lot of major headlines, the Rays are in a bad way right now, man. Um, yeah, I ever mean, since I, I know you and their uh, their personal Rays Twitter account have had your feuds in their days, but there's something like that that day they came out with the tweet that was like, over the past 162, we got the best record in the East. I think ever since that tweet, they're below 500 and like significantly. I'm not blaming the Rays Twitter person. I but- will. It's the worst. Listen, I not I don't even say this as a joke. This is my serious voice. Uh, a lot of people like to say that what we're doing is fun for baseball. Right. I may be being a bit of a jerk here. What the Rays Twitter is doing is bad for baseball. They need to fire the person that runs that account. It's an embarrassment. It's the most cringy thing in the world, and I dislike it very much. It's not a fake feud. I've had a lot of fake feuds in my life. This isn't even a feud. I just really think it's bad. It's feeling feudy. It's embarrassing. yeah, I I think the other thing that's interesting, and I think we're stumbling into some trade stuff in a minute, and I, 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 I'll I stop saying where I reference it from because I listen to the Buster Only thing. So if you hear if you hear me saying something, I heard it from the Buster Only interview, <laughs> he's, still, he's still heavy on, and a lot of people have been saying this, that the Rays are going to try to cash in their chips and make a big move. 
And it's because they have a ton of organizational depth. And you've heard me rant about it. I mean, they called up guys like Nate Lowe and uh, Brasso. I'll finally say it right. Uh, in, in the infield there. And those guys just got plugged into the middle of their lineup from AAA. So their depth is really impressive. For me, it, it just concerns me so much because if you do cash in a bunch of these chips, y- you could still not make the wild card if you're the Rays. Like, yeah, there's teams there. I, I will say this, and I, and this is kind of, uh, yeah, let's just move on to kind of trade targets and, and traders and, and teams that are looking to add and... Um, Traders, traders, that kind of stuff. Because Jake, I was gonna kind of talk about the the Red Sox. So one of the headlines um, is John Morosi said that the Red Sox are showing active interest in Padres closer Kirby Yates and Blue Jays closer Ken Giles. Right. Um, I know I'm a Yankees fan, and I think a lot of people will say that we do a good job being unbiased. What are the Red Sox doing, man? They just traded for Kashner to put Evaldi at closer, who's never closed before. Kashner has two bad games, but whatever. That's We're not going to judge the whole... They traded two 17-year-olds, so it's not like that's... Yeah. Oh, what a bad trade. No, it's, he's eating innings and doing that. But the Red Sox don't have the money because they want to stay under the tax this year. That's something right. that's known unless they pivot which from the, that. Which the Yankees did last year. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Teams do that now. The Yankees did it last year. The Red Sox want to stay under the tax. Not that Kirby Yates and Ken Giles have a ton of money on the books, but they got money on the on the books. The Red Sox don't have a farm system. It's, it's pretty depleted. Dombrowski likes to deplete farm systems, but they won their World Series. So no one's complaining about that in Red Sox land either. I don't I don't understand the messages that the Red Sox are sending. Like they did this to make Evaldi the closer. I said like that's weird cuz he's never closed before so you don't know. Now they're saying they're actively looking for closers. I think this was a leaked report by the club to motivate them. Jake, because the next two se- next four series, the rest yeah. of July for Boston. Tampa Bay Rays, then four games against the Yankees then three games against the Rays, and then four games against the Yankees. I'm not the best at math, but that's four plus four is eight, plus six is 14. They have 14 games in a row against the teams, against the teams, Jake, that can plummet them. Or they can or they can beat those teams and really say, hey, yeah, we need help. But I think that report is the Red Sox telling the players, like, hey, we, we want, we're still we're still on the hunt to add players, but not necessarily going to because it doesn't really make sense. Um, but I, if I the Red Sox, you wait out like these three games versus Tampa, and maybe if you if you sweep or you you get swept, you kind of have your answer. Yes, I I think it'll be interesting to see because Jim, you mentioned that fourteen game sample size or what, whatever our whatever whatever number our our math intern just gave us. There's eight games before the actual trade deadline day for them. Yeah. Uh. So so even even a smaller sample could dictate things. So you wonder how that goes. And I I don't know, Jim. I I understand they wanted to get under the luxury tax this year. And I, who who am I to talk? I mean, we we have people that come at us on Yankees Twitter that talk about the Yankees being a cheap organization, and I'm like, what? I I grew up for 15 years to, saying that the Yankees don't buy championships. Anyways, I I just think the red the Red Sox got their title, and when they came out and they they let Kimbrel walk, they let Joe Kelly go, and they I I understand it from a business standpoint that you want to get under that luxury tax. At the same time, you're coming off a championship, and it, it's so hard to repeat in any sport. And when you come out and send that message that you're you're already depleted bullpen, you're not replenishing that. And Jim, say if they do make one of these trades, say they go get Kirby Yates, and I I don't know what prospects would be in play or any of that. I I, I don't know. Is like a guy like Chavez on the table? I have no idea. I know I know there was a top prospect thing that came out recently that had a couple Red Sox guys sneak into the top 100. So so maybe they did a good job developing those guys, and and who knows what the deal would actually look like. But I don't know if those guys are quality prospects or players. I mean, if you're a Red Sox fan, would you rather be sitting there right now and saying like, 
well, I kind of just wish we re-signed Kimbrell and didn't trade away those prospects. Because in my head, I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I know. I think it's a message being sent, like that report. I don't know if they can afford... If I don't know if they can outbid for Kirby Yates or for Ken Giles. Ken, the, the Toronto's supposedly asking a lot for Giles, and Padres are asking even more for Kirby Yates. And the yeah. Padre, Padres and Red Sox have kind of a bad trade history. If you remember a while back, they traded for Pomerantz, and the Padres didn't disclose medical records, and they got in trouble for it. And there was kind of like... I don't know if it was bad blood, but there, it's, a bad, it's a bad history on their record. But hey, if the Red Sox the Red Sox make moves, who knows? The Yankees in 2017 they made some moves that didn't harm them. They traded to the for the they traded um, for uh, David Robertson and Tommy Canley from the White Sox. That was bullpen yeah. help. With, and Todd Frazier came along, so that was a team that was trading for the wild card. The 2017 Yankees. So teams can trade for the wild card. I don't think there's anything dumb about that because uh, you never know. Yeah, Jim, I think, well, going to Evaldi, you know, you, you wonder if the Red Sox would, would go back and do anything differently. It's still too early to judge anything. The guy did incredible things in the playoffs. Did the Red Sox maybe feel like they had to pay for what they did to Evaldi in the World Series? I don't know. That's a little sports gossipy. I won't go there because he also has incredible arm talent. Like, he's, he's a guy in baseball that people have been expecting to break out for a long time. I think you're right in kind of what you're dancing around is, for the Red Sox, it seems more likely that they do a smaller move. Like, people are talking about the Giants' bullpen right now. There's, like, five guys in the Giants' bullpen that if they decide to sell, teams would want. And I, I don't know. It feels like you could see the Red Sox bringing in another arm to say they did that. They brought in Kashner. But the salary cap thing is very real. And I wonder when they do get to CBAs if they almost try to get away from that. Because uh, let's be honest, if, if the Red Sox didn't have to deal with the salary cap, they'd have Kimbrell on that team. And they'd be running it back and going for it. So I, I wonder if that's a discussion in Major League Baseball right now. Yep. Some other teams, uh, the Brewers placed Brandon Woodruff on a 10-day injured list. But it's his oblique, which those are usually longer than 10 days. They were already in the hunt for a starting pitcher, Jake. Now they're yeah. going to be even more so. Uh, they've been linked to all the big names, Bum, Wheeler, Syndergaard, Will Smith, uh, and the bullpen and stuff like that. But uh, the Mets are dumb. Sorry. They should Ooh. trade Zach Wheeler and Noah Syndergaard because for three years they have not, and they've yet to win. They're like, we're going to win with this staff. They've yet to do it. They should try and get. They should try and cha trade in while they can, and then Bum and Bumgarner and Will Smith. That's a whole conversation with the Giants. Are they going to trade? I don't think the Giants are going to trade away these pieces, Jake. They are on a magical run right now. If they win this series versus the Cubs, ooh, the see the Giants are kind of a weird place in baseball. The Giants. I lived in the Bay Area for a little. They pride themselves on servicing the fans, and we franchise our guys. And our guys are our guys. Uh, for real. They won three World Series, yeah. so the city has an attachment. So if they think there's a chance, and Bumgarner knowing him and his connection, like I think he's going to say, like, no, I'm waving my no-trade clause. We're winning here. Let's, let's go to the wild card, and I'm going to start that wild card game, and I'm going to get us into the playoffs. I don't, like me personally, I think that's not possible. But I think the Giants believe in themselves. They're a proud franchise. I think when they do shop bum, they're going to be kind of upset with the returns they're being offered. I don't think they're going to be that high. And I think they may say, let's roll the dice. Now, that's just my opinion. Uh, if you're a new listener, I have no qualms with being wrong ever. Uh, I will be wrong a ton. And when I'm right the few times, I will brag about it and rub it in your face. Oh, yeah. So, ha, ha. But I think that this run that the Giants are on is crazy right now, Jake. And they're a team that has had magical runs before and that when the pressure's on, they do it. And just like ticket sales of a race and just the city yeah. getting behind them. And that's, a, that's a, a town, the Bay Area, where like they want to support their teams. And I think the Giants can really buy into that by keeping pieces right now instead of selling. So who knows? Yeah, they, I, I mean, they have serious magic. When you see a guy with the last name Yastrzemski hitting a walk-off, that puts a little lead in your pencil. 
Um, and a, another guy, Jim, Alex Dickerson has been raking for them. If you remember, we did a little talk in Giants last week and I did my weird Brandon Crawford rant. I had a couple Giants fans reach out and they're like, yeah, you're, you're kind of on it. He has a couple big games and the other games it's, uh, I don't know, kind of a little lackluster production, but, um, this Alex Dickerson, man, 24 games. He's hitting 397 right now. Uh, 1.258 ERA. So, I mean, almost a month of baseball from a, from the 29 year old. Cause I said Sandoval was having the best hitting season, which um, a couple guys are sneaking up to him, but I think body of work, is still Sandoval. Um, so yeah, you, you wonder it's Bochy's last season. You're right. It is a team that likes putting a good product out there. Yeah. And, and, and they're, they're doing good things. So yeah, I mean, if you could, and, and I mean, even it, it you're this, this next series really is huge. They're 14 uh, and three right now with four, with three walk-off wins, all versus the Mets, uh, and one of their losses was a walk-off loss. They're playing good baseball. They're getting good performances from people that you don't really expect. Like Bumgarner came out and pitched like his old self versus the Mets, and then they had they had a rookie face the Mets in Game Two, who shut him down. Didn't he have some crazy was outing? It Tyler Bede. I don't know if he's a rookie. I might be wrong there, but eight innings pitched, three hits, no earned runs. I mean, they got the fever right now, man. We when we we watched the Yankees series out there. When was that? May. Yeah. And and we were like, yo, this is a tough team. They were they were playing a couple guys who weren't outfielders in the outfield, and it, it just it felt like the story was this is it's going to be tough that this is Bruce Bochy's last season, and now look where we are. So I uh, I I don't know you, and I I think we had this kind of argument last week that was. You were saying if you're a front, a smart front office guy, you want to rebuild. Like that's the sexy thing to do right now. But the Giants have always been different than the rest of the MLB. When no yeah. one was signing free agents, they signed Kutch, Longoria, and someone else. They've always, they like you said, they like putting a good product on. They're like one of the last teams I'd expect to tank. So that, uh, in theory, so what we just said there would be that Mad Bum was off the table, which always kind of felt weird anyways, because the guy doesn't fit in a lot of towns to start. Um, so, I, I mean, does that... I, I think something interesting I heard, and again, this last time I'm referencing Buster, he's a friend. I've it won't got a be, picture. it won't be, it won't be. It's whatever. We're, we met Buster, guys. he was so nice. So nice, like eerily nice. Yeah. Um, weird. King of winter meetings, easily. But uh, Jim, I mean, with the pitching, I think it was interesting that I heard that there's a lot of potential pitchers out there to be had. Like when you say the names like Wheeler, Syndergaard, is Bumgarner still out there, Stroman, there's a lot of potential candidates, Mike Miner, Lance Lynn. We've been doing this game of like, who is available? And I mean, it feels like it feels like Mad Bum has come, come off and now the Texas guys are on. I, the the thing that I thought was interesting that Buster said, he's like, there's not a lot of people talking about hitters and I, they don't know if it's availability or I mentioned it to you briefly, but there's kind of this quote unquote juice ball era in baseball where someone like Kettle Marte has 21, 22 career homers coming into the season and now he's got 21 this year. So people are kind of scared to make a move on the hitters because what if the ball is a little juiced and then they take that out and now the guy you trade for that you thought was a 25 homer a year guy is back to 11? All depends on years. Like if you're trading for a rental for this year, you take him because this year is Screw this year. it, punch it, yeah. 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 Um, the other team, the other update I wanted to say is that um, – Sources said that Toronto's Eric Sogard and Texas's Danny Santana are among the super utility players drawing interest from the MLB. Those guys always get looked at because they can you can plug them into multiple positions. Uh, they say the Royals have too high of a price on Whit Merrifield, so they're pivoting to Sogard and Santana. The Rangers just lost a lot of games coming out of the break, Jake. Yeah. The Rangers, and this is now the third time I've said this on every episode of this show, so sorry if you're sick of it, if you're listening to the first time, the Rangers have so many pieces they can trade. I don't know if they want to, but listen to the names of players that are going to be free agents next year. Elvis Andrews, there's a, he has an option, a player option. Azdrubal Cabrera, 
I don't again. I don't know if teams would want all these players, but Sean Kelly out of the pen, he's got a club option, so they might keep well, him. And and it's what it's what we just said, Jim. I mean, you're a team like the Giants, and Joe Panic really hasn't given you much this year. Do you give someone like it's Drupal Cabrera a shot, and does he get hot? But go on. Um, Hunter Pence, Logan Forsythe, Edison, Edison Volk. Again, I don't know if these guys are like I don't. I might be saying something dumb, but there's a lot of guys here, and now Santana seems like the Rangers, who this wasn't. A win now season anyway. If I was a Rangers fan, it would be the same way I was in 2016 with the Yankees when it was the first time in my life where I was saying, trade Beltron, trade McCann, yeah. trade Chapman, trade everyone, let's get some pieces, and that's how you can rebuild real fast. So I think yeah. the Rangers might be dumping pieces soon. They might have a lot of people coming. I didn't even say like Mike Miner. Um, there's a lot of guys out there. And Danny Santana, man, I, I, I said the Kettle Marte one that I did steal from B.O. I won't say his name. I'll take Danny Santana from him. 72 games. He's got 13 homers. He's hitting 320 with a 352 on base. Coming into this year, uh, he had half of those home runs. He had 13 career home runs. Now he's matched that this season. If you're the Rangers, this guy can play every position, and he's been raking. I mean, even... Even if you get a little bit of value, this was a guy who was a bad season away from like being a quadruple A player or something like that. So um, I, I think I think you're right. I think Texas and Texas. I didn't even I'm say them, I didn't even say Lance Lynn, who just struck out eleven Astros, and he's the only guy to strike out double digit Astros. He did it twice in a week or some some crap like that. Um, if you're the Texas, I think you get on the horn now and you start doing it because Build like up you the just bidding said. Wars. Th- there's going to be a couple more teams that are like, all right, the, the D-backs decided to send it in. Like, we, we've got five days before the deadline. If you're Texas, get in there now because I think teams are still nervous. We saw it with the Cashner trade. We saw it with the Homer-Bailey trade. If Texas fully presents that to the league, man, they could move some pieces and get some really good returns quick, I think. Yep. All right. The, Bre- the Braves are also looking to add some pieces. We, we may have missed some other teams looking to add pieces. The Twins probably looking to add pieces. But I think that's yeah. that's the the gist of the trade talk for this show. We do have the uh, Tigers picked up Edwin Jackson, who Boom. Uh, didn't get out of the first inning a while ago versus the Angels, and then yeah. they put him on the Phantom DL. But the, the Tigers, they're not trying to – they literally need someone to eat innings. So Edwin Jackson is going to go put on an inning-eating display in Detroit. Now that he's healthy, Jim, watch out. He ate a lot of innings for the uh, for the Blue Jays. <laughs> Tell you that. Yikes! All right, moving on to the second half of the show. We have segments. We have awards. We got topics, and this is where we're going to cover more of the action that just happened. Jake, we're going to go for standout performances. You're on the board first. Who impressed you this weekend? Who is your standout performance? Jimmy, like we hinted towards before, there weren't a, a bunch of hitters that jumped off the map. You, you, I think you mentioned Mercado had the five-hit game. Our, our dude, we, we like watching him play. Jim, for me, this was easy, um, and, and it's not a shot at the team he did it against, as some people might say. Asher Wojciechowski, Jim. Wojciechowski. Are, is he your, he's always been one of your favorites, right? Always been a huge Ash Woj fan. A uh, serious Woj bomb in Baltimore this weekend. He goes 7.1 innings pitch, 10 Ks, one hits Boston. Uh, Boston gets one hit as a team. Jim, and this is just a good story, and you know on, on our Talking Yanks podcast, I was pretty hard on Baltimore earlier this year. I said they literally have the worst pitching staff ever assembled. Um, they, they've gotten a little better, so they're fighting me on that, so good for you, O's. And Jim, this is where... Uh, this is part of the beauty of baseball. I don't know if Asher Wojciechowski gets a chance on a lot of teams unless they're named Baltimore. And he comes out, man, and he's been twirling it. He's 30 years old now. He spent all of last year in AAA. Former fic- first-round pick out of the Citadel, Citadel Jim. Oh, uh, wow. He's a Citadel guy. Yeah, 20, 2010. Uh, th- do you say thank you for your service for Citadel? Yeah, right? No idea. No idea. Um, but uh, Jim, 
he had a hell of a game, and now with that game, his season looks pretty strong. His strikeouts, his K rate is super up, so you wonder if he's one of these guys that leaned into analytics and was looking for his final chance, or, I mean, back in the day, we'd just say, like, oh, the light bulb went off for him, and now he's good. Uh, Randall, Asher, Woj, so he, he did, ooh, would you have gone Randall, Randy? His name, where, how does he get Asher? It's his middle name, Randall Asher. Wow, Randash. All right. I, I don't know. I don't think he had a choice in the matter. Bring back the RA. We got a talking um, Yanks listener supporter named Asher. I met him at the Yankee Stadium. Cool name. Pretty nice. But uh, yeah, Jim, I mean, now he, he's up to 23 innings, 31 strikeouts in those innings. And without the Orioles, he may have never gotten a chance again in Major League Baseball. Um, stoked for the guy. Imagine being 29 years old, you have a career ERA of about six in the major leagues, and you spend the whole year in AAA. I mean, you have those whispers and thoughts come in your head, and dude throws what could be the game of his life. I hope it's not. I hope he comes back and he throws a couple more, but could be the game of his life against the Boston Red Sox. Asher, well, it also is interesting because, you know, he didn't replace... So the the Orioles had Bundy go on the IL, then they traded Kashner. So Woj was up before the cash trade. But if you're Boston, it's kind of funny because you're like, wish we traded for that guy right now. But not Oof. true. Not true. Wow. Because of the track records and all that. It was kind of funny. But could have wow. got a cheaper price. He, he had much better performance. Anyway, Boston, Boston fans would have been irate, I think, if they traded for Woj. But oh, yeah, not, they would not, have. Not after, not after Sunday. That was a joke. They, they, yeah. they, whatever. Uh, my standout performance and uh, new graphics on the screen. I put both guys right on this live Whoa. feed, Jake. It's, it's amazing. Like Is that. Mike Leak. Freak a leak. Another guy with a no hit bid. Woj was no hit uh, through six innings. Mike Leak, no hit through uh, seven innings or eight innings. I, I think it was eight. I think it was eight as well. But this is the coolest part about this Mike Leak performance. Complete game shutout. Seattle Mariners, Mariners pitcher Mike Leak. Complete game shutout versus the Angels. One hit. Angels have a lot of good hitters. They got Trout. You ever heard of them? They got Otani. They got Pools. Is uh, La Stella broke his leg, but he was having a good season. Uh, one hit. One walk. Six Ks. But Jake, the most impressive part about this is his last start before this one was against this very same Angels team. And the final line was 0 0.2 innings pitched, eight hits, seven runs, four earned. Little better. So he goes, he, can't, he doesn't make it out of the first inning. And then in game, the very next game, he completes the game. That's got to be a great feeling. That's a great way to just wash that first, that last outing right out of your system. Complete game shutout for Mike Leak. Good for him. Good for Seattle, I guess. I don't, I don't know what Seattle's rooting for at this point. Yeah, and big. Uh, you, you. I think you referenced him in the wrong area. Dan Vogelbach had the big game in this game. Yeah, too, yeah, I had uh, that. six RBIs. Uh, yeah, good for Mike Leak, man. He's uh, he's still out there twirling it, like you said. The bounce back in baseball. How could you face the same team <laughs> about a week later and have those kind of results? It's crazy. It's crazy. So, uh, uh, good for our guy, Mike Leak, eight and eight on the year. Four two seven ERA, kind of, yeah, sounds that sounds like Mike Leak. Sounds like Mike Leak to me. And I think the other thing that was kind of cool when he was doing it, Jim, we were caught up in Yankees land, and they were doing the David Cohn uh, twenty year anniversary of his perfect game. And I, I don't know, I mean, that's still a fun moment, whether it's no hit or perfect game. If Mike Leak had done that in Seattle, I mean, you become you're a memory. Like there, there would have been the ten-year Mike Leak reunion in a decade, and we'd we'd be talking about that. Who knows if people would be listening? We'd talk. We'd be talking. Yeah, we'd be talking. Um, all right, next up, Jake. We have. You want to do some sad trombone? <laughs> Slump. Watch your favorite segment. Well, okay. I have Update big, me, Jim. I have big news because if you're a new listener, we put people on the slump watch, and they're on it until they're off of it. Dwight Smith's been on the slump watch. Orioles, left fielder, Dwight Smith, Come on, Jr. Dwight. Tell me something good, Jim. He's been on the slump watch a while. You're never going to believe this, Jake. Second game versus the Red Sox. First three at-bats. Are you ready for this? 
First three Three at bats, ground out, ground out. Fly ball. Oh, no. He's going 0 for again. Nope. He faces Darwinson Hernandez, who walks him. And that's what he needed. Next at bat, ninth inning of a blowout game. Colton Brewer for the Sox comes in, and Dwight Smith hits a double. He is off the slump watch. The very next game, he had another hit. It was Good getting job, sad. It, that was that was a sad slump watch. It was getting so sad. The other person, I think Pete Alonzo has come off the slump watch, Jake. Polar bear. I think he had um, a home run in home extra run innings. Home run in extra winnings to win it, uh, kind of. Yeah, then they blew it. Um, yeah. But I think he then he had some more hits later on. Uh, uh, is he off? Okay, in this series, Jake. Okay. Pete Alonso, he went two for 15 with two home runs. I think this still fits the home run derby narrative, guys. I'm sorry. Since the home run derby, Jake, since the home run derby, Pete Alonso has four hits, okay? Yeah. In 41 plate appearances, and three of them are home runs. Yeah. So is he still That's on? That's tough. That That's fits the home run we, derby narrative. We like the home run. Um, I don't know. I wish there was like an on deck circle or like a timeout because he's definitely not out, but he shouldn't fully be in for a two home run series. Too, you know what, you know? Jake? You're you're beating around the bush. He's still on slump watch. He's on it. Slump he's, watch. He's Pete almost Alonso. he's almost off. But I do think. You have four hits, three of them are home runs. Maybe you just got a home run derby swing. That's what the that's what the hot news folks would be saying. That's what the pundits would say. Who else um, was here? Tilson from the White Sox was on here, Jake. He's like a backup Tilson. catcher, so I don't even think he's worth bringing up. That's wow. so mean. That's Til- so to, mean, to, Jimmy. Til- to Tilson's wife and children who are listening. Jesus. Like that a, was- he's an outfielder. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so, so that's even more. more that's mean. even more shots fired. <laughs> that's that's actually kind of the meanest thing you can say. Anyway, he player. went oh he went oh for seven this series. Um, they might have even did they send him down? He hasn't played since July sixteenth. Oh yeah, so he got so then. Well, he was a okay, defensive so, replacement anyway, so I don't know. He uh, he, let's he take might, him off. No one, no one needs. To know yeah, about him. sorry, sorry, CT. Well, uh, congrats, you're off the slump watch. The. Ali, Ali, Elias Diaz, do you have any update on him? He was on Slump Watch. Elias Diaz, my guy from the Pirates. Um, he's a catcher, Jim, so you can you can make fun of his position and his life for being a pro baseball player if you want to do that, I guess. Um, Would never. Let me bring up the game logs. It looks like he, got he played on the... Tw- yeah, he played on the 20th. He had a hit. He played on the 19th. El- Elias, get out of here. Congrats, Elias. You are off of Slump Watch. And the team, the Rockies, the entire team, they lose another series, but they did win the third game. They're in the same boat as Alonzo. Like, they're so close to being off, but they could lose yeah. the next two, and then it's like they're, they're on. So they're still Instantly on Instantly back on. You'd, you'd like to think that they, they beat the Yankees. They save some of their bullpen arms. They have a happy flight, which I feel like that's a big thing for the Rockies right now. So ho- hopefully they stay off the slump watch. Happy flights are huge in baseball, and that's not a joke. Jordan Zimmerman, pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, he had two outings, seven earned runs, back-to-back, seven earned runs, mm. seven earned runs on slump watch. His next outing versus the Toronto Blue Jays, 3.2 innings pitched, six earned runs. Zimmerman, you are still on slump watch. Mr. Hot Body Handsome Handsome Face, Lucas Duda on Slump Watch, Jim. Yeah. He's been benched. He got he's Lucas Duda had such a bad stretch. Seven uh seven for his last sixty two in his sixteen games, one twelve average, one forty five on base percentage. He got benched, Jake. Straight up yeah. benched him for five out of six games. Um I do not have Sunday. I'm gonna go check Sunday right now. Lucas Duda, Royals. I think he got the start Sunday. If he got a hit, is he off slump watch? He did. He went one for four on Sunday with a double. Okay. If it was a single, I would have said no, but the double, I'm okay with it. So we're okay. Well, we'll check on him next week because he, he's this is his first week on it. He's still on it for this week. Okay. Yeah, there's still a follow up. You you got Jan Gomes on here, everyone's favorite Brazilian catcher, Jim. Three for his last nineteen. Yeah. 
It was tough for Jan. And he's on the Nationals who are doing well right now. Tough for Jan. And, and Jim, this, this last one made me a little sad because we saw him. Wait, hold on. Jan, and- Jan Gomes, Jake. He hasn't had a multi-hit game since June 7th. And since his last multi-hit game, he's six. He's six for 52, 115 mm. batting average. So Jan, and, and he's 0 for his last four games. So Jan Gomes, big time slump watch. He's in a bad way right now. And yeah, the, the last one, Jim, I, we, we love a new face to the game. And when we saw him earlier this season, he, he looked like a lot of fun. You, that Uki Kikuchi, you say. Uh, you say. Last t- you say. You Kikuchi. say. Well, you say. You say. Um, last 10 games, Jim, 7 8 5 ERA after having a 3 4 3 in the first 11. Not enough pine tar? What do you think is going on? He was there? a big pine tar user when he faced the Yankees. Um, I think this is the league catching up. They made an adjustment. Now he has to make an adjustment. But yeah, his first 11 games, it was looking like, wow, this dude's the real deal. Nice curveball. Last 10 games, 7, 8, 5 ERA. He's got two good starts in the middle uh, uh, out of the last 10. The rest, some mediocre, some brutal. His last start was pretty brutal. So you say Kikuchi thought he proved himself. Um, he's got more proven to do. And that, that's normal. I mean, I don't That's think normal. this is anything to be worried about if you're a Mariners fan. It's so normal for a pitcher to go through the league once, do well, go through a league a second time, do poorly. You kind of the third and fourth time is when you really see what you got. It's like uh, that, that pitcher for the pa- the Padres that um, won. Uh, Paddock. Thought, what? Paddock. Everyone was so impressed with him. And I was like, it's his first time through the league. Like you can't you cannot put stock into first time through the league. Yeah, he's uh he's been following it up though. He's currently two seventy RA. It's it's not where he was, but it's still really good. How many games does he have since coming back from uh, the minors? Um, he's got sixteen on the season. Let me let me see if I could find his minor league gap. Um, when he gets it down, so he, um, I'm missing it because I mean it wasn't a big send down. Like there's there's a couple ten day gaps here, but he he's been good of late. I mean his past. His past four starts, Paddock has been twenty four innings pitched, one and four eighty RA. So All right, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he was I, maybe I, he was hurt or something. I don't know. No, I th- I think you are right. It is like people get a scouting report on you and you know. And I, I always that's one of the most impressive things to me about guys and uh, we we're lucky enough to watch a team that's known for their patience and a lot of veteran hitters. A a lot of times the the Yanks see a team or they'll see a new pitcher that first time through the order, and you like see them calculating in their head, and then that second time they come up, it's like, oh, I've seen him now, I can do this, and yeah. that I mean that blows me away. That people have brains and can use them. A little bit. <laughs> Can't relate. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Tough. <laughs> that's that's a different world for me. Um, anyone else for slumpies? You want to get in fuego, baby? Yeah, let's go. Let's move on to the the good stuff. Let's congratulate some guys for having good weekends. En fuego means on fire, baby. Oh, I I had a couple slumpers. I put them in the wrong spot. Tommy Pham and Tony, get, uh, excuse me, Joey Gallo. You guys had some bad bad series. Get it together, all right? Wow, they thought they were scot free. Pham and, Ga- they got Pham and Gallo were listening. They're like, thank God they didn't pick up on my slumps. And then you throw them in at the last second. That was incredibly rude of you. Tommy Pham is listening at the park right now after his one for 18. Thought he got away with Thought it. Thought he got away uh, with it. Uh, no. Jeez. Trey uh, Mancini no. for the Orioles had a great series. Kind of the professional hitter. Professional hitter on the Orioles right now. Five for 12. So that's a little under 500. Math. Two doubles, Math. two home runs, four runs, four RBIs, 462 on base percentage in this uh, three game set at Fenway, I believe. Good for uh, Trey Mancini. Next one that I have is fun, Jake. Albert Pujols has been on fire since the break. Since I know the machine, break, I just Albert. 440 batting average since the break. 444 on base percentage. One dot 244 OPS. And he he was he was on my uh he was on my borderline hot 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 watch and fuego last week. Um yeah, man, and he's driving in big runs. Um so, I mean, good for Albert, man. That's awesome. 
Yeah. And I feel like every two weeks he does something cool. He's giving a fan something. Albert feels like he's in a great spot in his life right now. Like there was a couple years there where baseball turned on him because he was getting paid too much. And he can't now run. Just, he can't move. Yeah. Now it just seems like he's kind of in the, in a happy area. So good for Albert. Well, he graduated from like you're like two years where you're like, you're old, dude. You suck. Yeah. And then there's two years after that where you're like, wow, you're still playing and doing decent. I thought you yeah. were dead. And then you get excited yeah. for him. That's like the that's like the cycle. How that's, did he how did he do a- in the series? Because they did get no hit. It looks like he might not have played in that game. Uh, was he in the no hit game? Uh, he did sit that game. Yeah. Smart. Wow, that was smart of him, Coach. I'm That's gonna, really you know, smart by Albert. I'm gonna take this one off. Leak, leak's looking like no. It's no funny. Hit. He he was probably pissed he didn't play in that game because they knocked Leak around last time, and then they started no hitting, and he was like, "All right, <laughs> day off, baby." Yeah. So in his in the two games he did play versus Seattle, he went four for six with a home run, a walk, and a sack fly. Good job. Yeah, uh, my guy that I, I mean, I, if I can talk about him, I'm pretty much going to talk about him. Ramon Laureano, Jim, he, uh, you mentioned we're not great math guys. Eight for 16, that's, that's batting 500 in your last four uh, with a homer in there. And a center you, fielder for anyone that doesn't know who Ramon Laureano is. You know I'm a sucker for center field and third base. Those are the two positions that if you can play them special, it, it it genuinely speaks to my soul and any Ramon Laureano highlight. Uh, if you haven't seen him, I mean, just go check it out. What he does with his glove and his arm are a blast. Dude, Jimmy, this guy can hit too. Um, he's got an OPS in the eights for the center field. He, he's one of the best center fielders in the game. He's 24 years old or excuse me. He turned 25 on July 15th. Happy late birthday, Ramon. Um, and Jimmy went to your favorite college, Northeast Oklahoma A and M. Wow, yeah, wow. I haven't. I got to get back there for a game sometime. So yeah, Jim. I mean, if you you're gonna what give was that me Northeast a, Oklahoma A and M, Northeast Oklahoma A and M College. I not was a joke. when they turned me down. That was my number one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you're gonna give me a defensive center fielder that can put some games together, that was a 16th round pick out of N O A M C. Uh, yeah. Poppy Patron's going to like that guy. He has had nine multi-hit games in July. He's played 15 games, nine of them. He's had, mo- he's had more than one hit. I think we... Uh, and we three saw of them, him, he's had three hits. That's impressive. I, I remember when he kind of came up with the A's, and he, he felt that it's rare in baseball you see a guy that can like own a game. And it, he's one of those guys, when he has a big day... I mean, he's going to affect every aspect of the game. So I, I love, uh, I love watching me some Ramon Laureano. Next, um, next up, who got mad? Who got mad, Jim? Not a lot of madness this weekend. Bud Black got ejected, but he barely got mad. Yankees game is a check, yeah. check swing didn't go Ianetta's way. Or is it that was De- more sad than mad. Desmond? It was more sad. It was it only. I did a breakdown on it. It's sad. Uh, Cattell Marte. Kettle? Cattell? I think it's Cattell. Me too. Kettle would be weird. Cattell Marte got ejected, uh, struck out, was arguing pitches earlier in the at-bat he didn't like. Same exact thing with Kevin Pillar. Kevin Pillar hit a walk-off, then gets ejected. I don't know if it was the next day, but in the same series, he had a walk-off and, right? And got ejected. Uh, I don't know if he hit a walk. I'm, tr- I'm blank. I think yeah. he did. But anyway, Pillar got ejected. Curveball above the zone. Terrible mm. call, Jake. He was like flabbergasted. And again, it was yeah. like it was strike one or strike two. He, he grounds out. Oh, I did see that. It was a really, really bad yeah. pitch. So Pilar got mad. Three ejections. Nothing. Uh, none were crazy enough to, you know, get big headlines. But they happened. They got mad. Yeah, I guess. Uh, and hey, we, we've been we we try to stay as neutral. I don't know if this is mad. But our our dude Aaron Judge, and I think it's something that should be talked about because you had perfect images of it. Aaron Judge gets the most low strikes called on him in Major League Baseball. I actually think Matt Carpenter has him beat, but it's a lot more games. But Judge gets called out on a low fastball, like oddly low. Like this, this couldn't, this shouldn't be happening. Like we should have a challenge flag or something. Anyways, that's for another. That's for a rainy day. 
Uh, he comes out his next at bat, and he actually raised his pants a little, so the strike zone looked a little different. And you, you, you had the image of it. It was awesome. Yeah, he, under the knees. A lot of guys wear their pants high to show where the knees are. Yeah, and they're at bats, and then he raised them, hit a home run in the next at bat, but also got another one. I think we should have a wrong alert on the scoreboard. Wrong. Just shame, <laughs> just shame the umps. Ooh, I like that. Just on the big scoreboard in center field after like that strikeout. They show the replay, and then they just go, wrong. Yeah, why don't teams do that? I think the umpires guess, would quit. I think yeah, they could quit yeah. on the spot. Perfect. Like I know big, some robots. A big gong. Gong. Wrong. Gotta start doing that. Yeah, wrong alert. Uh, um, there was no call-ups, no debuts, but we did have some walk-offs, Jake. Like we said, the San Francisco Giants walked off three times. We had one series with three extra inning walk offs against the Mets. So we'll actually we'll just call it two. Um, you get one taken away. Yastrzemski hitting a walk off. I mean, that's just so cool. Um, Dwight Smith not catching a fly ball. Not as cool as a walk off. Not Dwight. Dom. Not Dwight. Dom. Yeah. D Smith. Excuse yeah. me. Two Smith left fielders though. D Smith. Um, Kepler walked it I, off for the Twins. And Donaldson had a bases loaded shot that, like in the in the box score, is a single, but it was like off the wall a single, for the walk yeah. off for the Braves. I think there's one or two others that I'm forgetting, but uh, we need your help. Tweet us in yeah. walk off watch slump watch. Who got mad? Need your help, guys. And that that Donaldson one was cool because he got jammed on that pitch, but he just had such a nice swing on it, and he's so powerful that it. It got going, but like it, it hit a part. It hit a part of the bat that sometimes I feel for other guys, like the shortstop's catching it, and his cleared the left fielder. He's been he's been good. He's in a lot of months, uh, a lot of home runs this month. He's been good. He, uh, I think he was on last week's last week's in Fuego or two weeks ago. I uh, bring her rain. It might have been my my player of the week. I don't know. I just give myself fake slaps on the ass sometimes. No. <laughs> well, speaking of awards. That's the yes. next segment. Jake and I each get to give out one award that we think is deserving. I went first last week, Jake, so what's your award? Jimmy, my award. You know, I've, I'm, I've been kind of caught in this musical trap with awards lately. Um, I'm giving out the ZZ Top Award, Jim. Okay. The ZZ Top Award. Any, well, I was going to say any guesses. We can't do that game here because it's all of Major League Baseball. Um, it's pretty tough. I'm I'm giving out the ZZ Top Award because he's got legs and he knows how to use them. Jim, Ronald Acuna, uh, Acuna Jr., uh, for your Atlanta Braves, the, the young all-star, one of the best young players in baseball. Jim, we mentioned, uh, I, we mentioned at the start of this, there wasn't too many like crazy standout performances. And, like, like no one was there and we're like, wow, they had four home runs this weekend. That's insane. Uh one of the biggest things that jumped off, Ronald Acuna Jr., he had four stolen bases, four swipes. Uh, nobody else in baseball had more than two. Only two guys had two. Only three guys in baseball this weekend had two or more steals. Acuna Jr. has four. He also has a home run to boot with it. He goes 471, 550 batting average, a one dot. 256 OPS in his last four. And I mean, he's just the one, one of the best young players in the game. So if I get a chance to talk about him, uh, I'm going to take it. And man, I mean, these, these Braves, he's got a 3.4 war on this season. And uh, man, Jim, I, I was hinting towards it because we, we were talking about how good the Nationals could be if you get them in a playoff series with their pitching. These Braves are kind of just rolling. Like we talked that the NL Central rate is heating up. As of now, knock on wood for our Braves fans, they just continue to keep that five, six game lead and just chugging along. Can you sing the ZZ Top legs song so we so we get it? She's got legs and she knows how to use them. Nice. It's a little something. Good stuff. It's all right. ZZ Top's not my vocal range. It's I don't know. It's very humid. Oh, it's hot in here. All right. My award is the Butterbean it's Award. The Butterbean Award. Who's? Oh my God! What was that reaction? Just, I mean, it's it's an it's a big award. You don't just give out the Butterbean Award, you know? Do you think people don't know who Butterbean is? I think if you did a Butterbean breakdown, you'd have a good time. I don't know how well known Butterbean is anymore. Butterbean was a big boxer. 
<laughs> like yes. a big boxer. Big boy boxer. Butterbean Award goes to Luke Voigt. Wow, okay. Took a 90 mile per hour fastball to the lips, to the kissa, and ate it. Took his base, went to first. Next up, I hear he's requesting a punch in the face from Butterbean to prove he can eat that as well. Also, Luke Voigt oh. kind of looks like Butterbean's like nephew. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you have to be careful with that kind of thing. But yeah, he... He's a relative of Butterbean that got more more meat, a little less butter. If you don't know what Butterbean looks like, it's a mm. must Google. I'm guessing a lot of people do. But yeah, Luke Voigt basically took a Butterbean punch to the face. Survived. You know who didn't? Johnny Knoxville. Got knocked out in that store in that jackass segment. Oh, yeah. Wow. I wonder if people remember him from that. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Do we even give the Luke Voigt? Spiel. Nope. If, if you don't know, check them out. Nope. We're moving on to everyone's favorite segment. Uh oh. Elevator talk. If you're new to the show, two minutes will be put on the clock. We're going to spin a wheel. It's going to land on a random team. We are going to talk about that team for two minutes. Jake will go to whatever websites he goes to. I'll go to whatever websites I go to. If you're stuck in an elevator with a fan of this team, you will now have fodder. You will be able. Yeah to talk to that fan and ask him some questions. When you leave stuff. that elevator, they're going to be like, wow, I met a really cool baseball fan in the elevator. Yep. All right, let's spin the wheel. Spin it, baby. The Atlanta Braves. Did we talk too much about them? Ooh, I feel like we did a lot of Braves. It's your call, man. I'm leaving it on you. I'll spin it again, and we'll choose one of the two. Okay. The Yankees. We're doing the Braves. We're doing the Braves. <laughs> the Braves, like Jake said, I think Jake's quote was like, they keep passing tests. Right. Um, they, keep, they keep saying like, is this team too young? Are they for real? They have a good veteran presence with McCann and Freddie Freeman uh, to and guide the young guys because they got a lot of young guys. Ozzy and Acuna is the guys you need to know. And Jimmy, how about your boy Young Thick? Oh, Young Thick, Austin Riley. Yeah. He's been... I mean, they They've got a young core, man. Acuna, Austin Riley, Albies, Stansby Swanson having a good year. Freddie Freeman still doing it at 29. Uh, Jim, I know what you'd love about this team. Everyone's got an OPS. Dansby Swanson's at 798. Every other starter is an eight or up. There, there's not a lot of dead outs in that lineup, and that's huge when it comes to postseason baseball. Uh, when you're not giving up easy outs, that uh, that makes you as tough as you can be as a team. Fun question you can pose is uh, how many how many players do you think end with 20 home runs? Right now, they've Ooh, got yeah. three: Freddie Acuna and Donaldson all have three yeah. over 20. Dansby Swanson's at 17. He'll probably get there. Austin Riley's going to get there. He's at 16. And Ozzie Albee's at 14. So it's like, you He's think Ozzie's going to get there? You think Ozzie can pop 20? Okay. Ooh, I like that. You'd be like, ah. Albie's uh, uh, having a good year. Yeah, man, I'm trying. And, and then we just, Kevin Gossman came off the IL. He was, had a rough start, and he's always, pe people have always liked him as a pitcher more than his numbers have come out, and his FIP and ERA would tell you that. You could go there. Mike Soraka having a hell of a year. And Jim, how do you pronounce Teheran? Tehran. Tehran, baby. Um, ooh, what's up? This is good elevator stuff. Who, are the, who do we think the Braves are targeting, if you had to pick a name out of a hat? Well, they've been, li they've been linked to Stroman. Um, okay. The, the Braves GM is the ex oh, Blue right. Jays GM, or whatever. and he drafted Stroman. So, boom, there you go. That's, there there's is. your that's conversation so, in the elevator. You know, that's an, our, G, our GM, he's the same GM that drafted Stroman. He likes him. That's when the elevator hits the floor. Like, you, you proved you knew the guys. You knew Acuna. You knew Albies. You knew Freddie Freeman. Then that elevator hits. You drop the GM, who he drafted and who they're trading for. Boom. Elevator Boom. talk. Yeah. They already picked up Keiko, Jake. Yeah. True. So that's something else like, oh, you think picking up Keiko was the right move? It was pretty cheap, so it was. And he's been pitching well of lately, man. 3 5 ADRE. ERE, <laughs> 37 ERE? innings. The ERE for Dallas Keuchel. Um, his, his last game isn't the most desirable. 5.25 runs, four earned runns, but three seven innings pitched, two earned runs or less before that. 
So he's looking like he's going to be uh, of use and helpful to them going in the future. So there's some Braves stuff to talk about. That was Braves. That was talking Braves, baby. Talking Braves, baby. All right. Does that end the show, Jake? Any last words you want to say? I mean, big series that we're looking forward to. Giants and the Cubs. Uh, that can uh, really, really change some things. Uh, Cleveland and Toronto. Cleveland needs to win because Yankees are playing Minnesota. And then Boston and Tampa Bay playing each other is huge, too. Yeah, and I guess uh, uh, the the couple as the fringe dwellers wear down. I mean, the Giants, man, they're they're kind of the team to watch in baseball right now, which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the Giants can have a good series versus the Cubs, if they can beat the Cubs, I don't think they're selling any pieces. I think they're going to bank on magic and give back to the fan base. And by the way, if you're if you're someone outside of the NL West, if you're just a baseball fan, you're rooting for the Giants, right? Because this I, is fun. I, it's fun. If they go on a magical run, it's fun. I, I think the odds are stacked against them, but I think that they're the team that's most likely going to believe in small odds with the guys they have and what they've done in the past. Did I mention the Buster Only interview I listened to? I think so. Okay, good. The A's are playing Houston, White Sox, Marlins. Hey, in, in A's land, they're saying that's a big series. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. All right, guys. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Thank you very much to everyone that gave a review. We appreciate it. If you haven't and you want to uh, be nice, that would be awesome. This is something I said I was going to do at the end of the show, Jake. So now yeah. it's time for me to do it. Oh, wow. And it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to breeze through it. You're going to hear me say, you know how like they do the end credits of movies and they just put it on fast forward? Yeah. Are you ready? And again, these these are our Patreon subscribers. Go check it out. And ma- still leave a five-star review. And go to Talking Yanks and leave one too so Jimmy has to shave his beard. We're going we're gonna to hit that number, which is Woo! very upsetting. I don't know when Let's to hear do it. it. Baby. Uh, whatever. Because you need to be out here because once I shave my beard, I need, to, I need to put it on your face. Oh, I'll be there. That's upsetting. All right. So for the future... The shows will open, and they will be sponsored by our newest Patreon supporters. This could be you next week. Could be you next week. We have a, You can also watch live, but we have a ton of names that I need to get. give them their due. Although I don't want to miss people, you know? I'm trying to open up a full list because right now it's I got to right. go to the next page and the next page and the next page. All right, here we go. Here's a doozy. Thank you very much to Aaron Brewer, Aaron Wilkes, Abby Simmons, Adam, Adam Graves, Alan Kohler, Alex Sandberg, Alex Aponte, Alex Bloom, Alex Holcomb, Alex J, Alex Landon, Alex Peter Rose, Alexander Ellis, Alexander Cato, Alyssa BC, Andreas Tan, Andrew Asher, Andrew Knapp, Andrew Vela, Arnold Willington, Art Hernandez, Ash, Austin Lira, Ben Simpson, Benjamin Gallo, Benjamin George, Benjamin Zara, Bill Brasky, Blake C, Bobby Flynn, Brad Rollins, Brandon, Brandon Beardsley, Brandon, Brandon Bevanutu, Brandon T- Tremblay, Brent Neitz, Brian, Brian Acevedo, he was in the chat today, Brian Kluger, Brian Miller, Brittany Higgins, Bro91, Brian J. Evans, Brian Kitchens, Carl Daniel, what's up, Carl, Carson Newberry, Chase Cadet, Chris Mutant, Christopher Bratz, Christiro Miro, Christaparupus of Gavril, Christadolis Gavril, Christopher Mulligan, Christopher Ward, Claire Kimmerling, Cole Norum, Colin Van Yeselik, Yeseldike, Cooper, Mikkel John, Leah, Corey, Damian, Benitez, Daniel Moon, Darth Shepard, really? David Klager, David Jones, Big Baby David, David Sletta, Declan R. Kylie, Derek, Diamond Seraphin, Diego Aleman, Dominique Cottrell, Donna Cashman. Donna, what's up? Talking Yanks listener. You've been there from the start. Our first ever affordable jersey winner was Donna Cashman. Drew Falusi, Drew Ward, Dylan, Dylan Bywater, Dylan Todd, Ed Vagan, Eli, Emil, ha- Emil Hakeem, Emily Smith, Emmett Williams, Ethan, Ethan Donovan, Evan McAfee, McAfee Frank, Gabe Mose, Garrett, another Garrett, two Garretts, both admitted their last name. Wow. Garrett Mann. 
Jeffrey Turnis, George Masaves, George Stoll, Hank Sun, Hector Rodriguez, hmm, HM, <laughs> Holdwine, Indu Sukara, Jack Sordo, Jacob Perigo, Jacob Volker, Jake Storielli, hey why are you on here? Uh, Jake Joe Bob, James Barber, James Bowers, James McBee, Jamie True, Jason Billingsley, Jason Fernandez, Gene 0987654321, Jeff James, Jefferson Crabtree, Jenny Ramirez, Jeremy Akboog, Joe Visconti, Joel Vuktuven, Joey Artiga, John, John, John Hudgens, John Jordan, John Monaco, John B. Bucci, Jonathan Rafalov, Jonathan Brunt, Jonathan Burgess, Jordan, Jordan Gag, Joseph Benjamin, Sub Gag, Joshua Harmon, Joshua Pata, Joshua Stanton, Jozo, Justin Blake, Carger 29, Keith, Kelby Swartz, Kelvin Chang, Kendall Tucker, Kira Daly, Costa Pasalto, Kevin Chora, 1110, Kyle O, Kyle Rupp, Lance Daniel Hepper, Liam, Lincoln Barnes, Luke Roberts, M, Manav Matthews, Mark C, Mark N. Foley, Mason Kuwick, Mason Tolley, Matthew McCabe, Matt, Matt Cryan, Matt Perotto, Matt Vivrito, Matthew Bergami, Matthew Eli, Max D.S., Max Goodman, Maxwell, a lot of fucking Maxes, Max Verkuen, Maz, Megan, Megan Story, Michael, Michael Hannon, Michael Malone, Mike Schatz, Miranda Kinney, Mo Dowd, Mufats, Nate Bates, Nate Bates, that's a fun name, Nathan M., Neil Kulkarni, Nicholas Viaspoli, Nick Bubak, what up Bubak, Nick Patel, what up Patel, Nick Ramish, Nick Steffel, Nico, Nicholas Armand, Nicholas Medina, Norton Owen, Nicholas Smith, P. Bishop, Patrick Norton, Patrick Webb, Pavel Nejetic, Phil White, Pops, Quinton, Rashul Jasing, Rich Contreras, Richard J. Fowler, Rob, Robert Holgren, Roberto Sanchez, Robert Wong, Roman Gomez, Rory McDonald, Rupert Steffler, Sam, Sam Bogg, Sam Kramer, Sam Porter, Sam Raver, Samuel Swindle, Sanjay R, Schnauzer Face Minis, <laughs> Schnauzer Face Minis, <laughs> Scott Bersiaga, Sean Byram, Sean McGreer, Senjong Chu, Shidra Flum, Simon what? Ski Savitsky, Skylar JB, Smokes a Sig, Spencer Beeman, Spencer Tahan, Stella Kim, Stephen Murray Tabalt, Steve Peralta, Stephen Gregory, Teshun Chan, Thomas Donovan, Finish Strong, Jimmy, Thomas Cano, Tim Byer, Timothy Thomas, Trent Reese, Trevor Wilson, Tyler Anderson, Tyler Matea, Vic Wu, Victor A. Lucero, Victor Herrero, Vincent Galvin, Vincent Leah, Walker Harris, who cares? Will Baker, that was a real name, who cares? Will Baker, Will Francis, Will Kirkland, Will Menzies, Zach, and Zach Steinbergs. If you sat through that and listened to all of them, leave a five-star review and say, you're why nuts. did I do that? Yeah, you're insane. Why did I do that? Thank you guys very much. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate it. We'll be back on Friday. Talking big.